So we'll have a block today, guys. It's always good. I think you guys all know it's good to have blocks at the top of your mats. Always. You just never know how you're going to feel and what you need. So we're going to start at the back of the mat. If you have a block, the foam one, the, the softer one is probably easier, but you could still do it with the cork. At the back of your mat, you're going to stand up. Feet are going to be about hips width this apart. You'll slide your block going the long direction in between your thighs. You may want the softer one here, just in case. Yep. And then you're going to forward fold like that. And you're going to kind of, yeah. So anytime you forward fold, you're going to bend your knees, Tracy, slide the block this direction. Yeah. Someone smells good, like pepperminty, like the start of a race. It's me. Okay. <laughs> we knew it wasn't you. Yeah. So you're going to grab opposite elbows in a rag doll. You're going to bend your knees a lot. <laughs> the start of like the New York City Marathon smells disgusting. It's like everyone has biofreeze on them. Yeah. Yeah. No, I like this. This is, it's like a headache thing. Okay. So just drop down here, bring your weight forward, bend your knees a lot. Even if your legs are so bent, it's like a ledge for your stomach to rest on. That's fine. Grab the opposite elbow. So just kind of switch now. Yep. And you'll notice when you start the practice like this, sometimes you're a little uncomfortable. You feel like a lot moving through your body right now. Just kind of quiet the mind and begin to breathe. Ujjayi breath. And if it's too much, you could just bend your knees more. Keep the legs the way they are. Keep the knees bent. Don't remove the block. You're just going to release the hands and clasp your hands behind your back now. Interlace them. Pam, you'll see how this feels. If it's not good, just have your fingertips draped to the floor. Right in the center. There you go. Perfecto. Yeah, and as you forward fold with this bound like position with the hands, you drop your hands away from your low back in time. You never force anything. Elbows can always have a deep or soft bend to them. Change the clasp of the, of the grip. So you just want to kind of find the opposite grip now, opposite baby finger, opposite thumb. Let the head just go. Relax the jaw. Relax the face. I'm walking into stuff. Ay -ay -ay. Couple more cycles of breath. Keep squeezing that block in between your thighs. Feel your feet kind of anchored to the mat, bringing a little bit more weight forward and out of the arch. You think about three corners of that front foot and the right foot and the left foot. There you go. Relax the hands down to the ground. Uh huh. Keep the knees a little bent. Keep squeezing the block. You're going to start to crawl yourself out to a down dog, keeping the block in between your thighs here. Come on, soften. Yeah, so as you crawl out, the block will stay in between your thighs. If you're really opposed to it, I will not be offended if it doesn't work for you today. Yeah, so go this direction. Yeah, go this direction. Yeah, it's easier. Perfect. And then just feel. So the modification pan for shoulder stuff, instead of doing down dog is tabletop position. Okay, good. So your shoulders look good. There's movement of your shoulders away from your ears. What we don't want in down dog is all of our weight dumping down. That's why the use of this block there is actually quite nice because it's reminding you that you need to lift your hips up and back, squeeze the block, activating the back side of the body, drawing the pit of the belly in and up, spreading your toes wide across the mat. And finding this nice kind of bold shape. You're holding here a little longer. You're hearing your breath. You're feeling your breath. Yep. Sliding through the back of the throat. Roll forward to plank. Keep the block there if you can. You can always drop your knees if it's too much. So from down dog to plank, you may need to walk it out a little. It's not always 100% accurate. Activate here. Always a little micro bending your elbows. Yeah. Just we don't hyperextend. Squeeze the block. Mm -hmm. One suggestion in plank is to think about leading with your chest. Okay, yes. Not with your head, with your chest. Feel the ground. Hug the block. Hold. Think about that center line of the body and squeezing everything in there. Hips go up and back down, dog. Keep the block. There you go. 
plank position, keep the block there, hug the block in. Bring more weight forward, everybody. So you're gonna take a micro push up. It's gonna be a baby push up with the block. If you need to modify with your knees down, you do that. I only want you to go a little bit. Restraighten your arms. Hips go up and back down, dog. It's hard to just do a little. Yes. Roll forward plank. So micro push up. You're just gonna take a little bend. That's it. Restraighten. Hips go up and back down, dog. One more for good luck. Why the hell not? Roll forward plank. Imagine if I had four kids, I'd do everything in four. So think of yourself lucky. Micro push up. Imagine if I had six. My mom's best friend has six. Restraighten your arms. Hips go up and back down, dog. Walk your hands back to your feet. Your hands back to your feet. Take the block out from in between your thighs. Place it on the ground next to you. Come to the fingertips, long spine. And if your hands don't make it, you press your hands into your shins, long spine. Exhale, fold into yourself, let your head go. Good, root to rise right here at the back of the mat. Woof. Drag your hands to prayer at heart, drop your arms. Good. Arms sweep straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Crawl out to a down dog. This is how we're gonna practice today, by crawling. Yes. We're gonna crawl and try yoga practice. Roll forward to plank. Envision that block there. It kind of gives you a little bit like a point of reference. Halfway to a push up that works for you. If you're taking them out today, just hold plank. Halfway at most. Restraighten your arms, plank position. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Breathe your right leg up and back, three legged down dog. Try not to lift from like a space where you're flinging the leg, but you're lifting with power. Inner thigh, pressing the right foot towards the back edge of the mat. There you go. Come forward, hug your right knee in towards your navel. Arms are straight up and down. Look forward with your eyes. You got it. Land your right foot all the way forward and through. Come to your fingertips and feel for a moment. Step to the top of the mat with your left foot. Long spine right here. All good. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine to prepare yourself. You can just step, step to plank for this one. Halfway to a push up that works for you. Restraighten back to plank, hips go up and back, down dog. The left leg, you're gonna breathe it up and back. Yep, lift from your inner thigh and try not to move your pelvis so everything is very neutral. Come forward, hugging your left knee in towards your navel. Scoop up the belly. Arms are straight up and down. Look forward and land your left foot all the way forward and through. Nice big step. Sometimes not as easy as it feels or looks. Step the right foot forward to meet the left. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Root to rise. Come all the way up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Getting grounded here. Arms go straight up towards the sky. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare yourself. You're going to step, step to plank. Halfway to your push up of choice. Elbows are close to you, though. Yeah. Up dog or cobra, you pick your poison with this. See how your body feels. If you're lowering all the way, Tracy, bring your hands back a little bit. There you go. Hips go up and back down, dog. Arms stay active, look where you wanna go, step or float top of mat, get there light. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. We look thrilled in here, arms go straight up, yeah. Arms go straight up, dive over bent knees, forward fold, let your head go. Long spine to prepare yourself, you're gonna step, step to plank or float lightly into your chaturanga push up. The up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. Each one's getting better, and if it's not, you just need to talk it up. Look where you want to go, step or float, top of mat. Long spine on the end. Exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Arms go straight up, keep moving and breathing, that's the goal. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine repair, step or float, vinyasa of choice. 
yeah, you just step back if it's not for you. Up dog pulls you through your body. Keep your neck neutral. Hips go up and back. Down dog. Roll forward to plank. Yeah. We're going to shoulder tap here. So you can always drop your knees if you need to, Pam. Right hand, left shoulder without the hips moving. Right hand comes down. Left hand, le right shoulder. And go like that. Uh-huh. Engage the core. Do it slow. Neck is neutral. Opposite hand, opposite shoulder. Tap it out. Ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, breathe. Five, four, three, two, one, down dog. Walk your feet in a tiny bit closer. Right hand to left shin. You're gonna tap it back now. Right hand down, left hand, right shin. You got it. Bring it back and tap it out for 20. 19, breathe. Just move like that, nice and easy. I'm not interested in how many you do. I'm just counting just so we stay together as a team. Yeah. So if you do 10, you do two, doesn't matter. You do 22, good for you. Another 10. Perfect. Keep your hips up high. Five, four, three, two, one. Regular down dog. Good. Breathe your right leg up and back, three-legged down dog. Come forward, hug your right knee in. Step the right foot forward and through into a low lunge. Come to your fingertips, scoop up your right hip, activate your back leg uh, back leg, and rise to a high lunge, crescent lunge. So where are you? Are you here or are you someplace else? Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah. Being present is not an easy thing. Yes. So we just try our best. Get a little deeper into that front right thigh. Activate that back leg. You're going to find eagle arms. Okay. So your left arm is going to wrap underneath your right arm. If shoulders are an issue, just give yourself a hug. It, it kind of is important to recognize that you never want to pull down on your shoulders in this pose, regardless of the shoulder health. You want to keep your elbows very lifted and just give yourself a little bear hug if it doesn't work out. Yeah. And there's no judgment. Just give yourself a little hug. There you go. Step up into eagle. So you're going to wrap your left leg around your right. It may not be the prettiest balance of your life. So don't, you know, don't question it. Your foot may not get all the way around. So just work on kind of squeezing the legs and squeezing the arms down the center. The weights in the standing right heel. Stick your butt, Linda, back. There you go. Unravel just your arms. So they're like in a warrior one arms, straight up or any way that you take warrior one arms. Perfect. Unravel your left leg and step into warrior one and just trust the process that you know where the, the foot's going to land. The back foot turns on a pretty sharp angle. Neck is neutral. Shoulders slide down the back. Yeah. You want to feel your back left foot press firm and then your left ribs have the ability to turn forward. Hands to frame your front foot. I'm going to hit plank and you're going to lean on your left hand for your favorite version of a side plank. Now, you can modify with your bottom left knee down to the mat. You can stagger your feet. You can stack your feet. You can add tree. You can think about all these things and just, you know, keep it real simple too. Top arm straight up. You can go up and forward. It could be on your side body if something funky is going on. Engage the abdominal wall. Plank position. Chaturanga push up. Listen carefully. Plank position. Nice, Jody. Hips go up and back, down dog. Left leg lifts up and back, three legged down dog. Try and lift from the inner thigh rather than just like flinging it up. Come forward, hug your left knee in and up, scoop up the belly. Your arms are straight up and down and I would recommend looking forward here a little. Land your left foot forward and through. Find your position for your feet a little to the left is helpful. Grip your left hip in, rise, high lunge, crescent lunge, come on up. 
Your left knee tracks over your left ankle, okay? Your thigh bone slides back into the socket. Your back right leg can have a little bend if you need it to. So you're going to find eagle arms with your right arm underneath your left arm. So it's right arm underneath left arm or give yourself a squeeze. Yeah. Step up and wrap your right leg around your left leg and don't get caught up on making it super pretty. Just kind of go with it. Weights in that standing left heel. Your balance is going to be challenged. Totally fine. Stick your butt back, natural arching your spine, and just reminding you not to pull down on the shoulders. Keep the elbows a little more elevated than lifted, neck neutral. Unravel your arms. Unravel your right leg and slide into warrior one. Just, you know, trust it. Yeah, back foot pretty sharp on an angle so your right ribs can spin. Your left hip has to hug in. Pam, a little over to the right with your back foot and you'll be in good shape. Hands to frame your front foot. You're going to lean on your right hand for a Vashi sauce and a side plank. So pick one you know you can hold. That's why I say modify if need be because it's better to be in something that you know you can sustain than going too far, too fast, too furious. Yeah, and watch the top hip. We don't want it to roll. We want it to be stacked. Top arm straight up. It can be up and over. It can be close to your body. It's good when the floor is close. Yeah, because you never know if you're going to land on it. It's got you, though. It's not going anywhere. Plank position, slow. Sometimes you just want to get the hell out. Right. Chaturanga push-up because you can. You're all strong. Up dog or cobra, depending on what's going on in your body. Hips go up and back, down dog. Look where you want to go. Step or float to the top of the mat. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Heavy in your heels for chair pose. Shoot up to stand up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. From the top of the mat, arms go straight up. We're heavy in the heels and we sit way back into our chair. Then we dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to set you up. You step or float through your version of a vinyasa. So that may just be stepping into a dog and holding there. Up dog is smooth. Please don't jerk your neck back. Downward facing dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns. We step up into warrior one on your own breath, on your own beat. And then we bring it back down through the variation that works for you. Yeah. When you get to your down dog, you'll step your left foot forward and through. We'll anchor with the feet and then rise, warrior one. And then we bring it back down to the mat and you move the best that you can. I always say there's something for everybody in here. Everyone's at different levels, there's different energies today. So just listen to what your body is kind of craving. Look where you want to go. Step or float, top of mat. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Hit chair pose. Weight goes into your heels. Shoot up to stand up. Drag it to prayer. Drop your arms. Try and enjoy the process. Yes, arms go straight up. Here we go. It's not so bad. Heavy in your heels. Chair pose. Dive over, bent knees, forward fold. You got this. Long spine to set it up. Step or float through a vinyasa. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back down dog. Now we're moving on our breath. Right foot forward, warrior one. Chaturanga. Yes. Left foot lands on your breath. You got this. Chaturanga push up to the floor we go. Get out of your own way. Up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back down dog. Here we go. Let's do one more of these bad boys. Look where you want to go. Step or float to the top of the mat. Yeah, let's get it out of the way. Long spine. Exhale, fold. Chrissy's in it already. Chair pose. Chair pose. Shoot up to stand up. Drag it to prayer. 
Drop your arms. Last one. Arms go straight up. Heavy in your heels, stick your butt way back chair. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. Long spine to prepare. Step or float, vinyasa. Up dog pulls you through. Hips go up and back, down dog, looking good, Andy. Right foot forward, back foot turns, rise, warrior one. To the floor we go, chaturanga. Nikki's in a zone. Left foot lands. Yeah, she's on a yoga trip. Left foot lands, rise. It must be that peppermint she put on her head. She's like moving like on a totally different level. Chaturanga push up. Her face is on fire. Yeah, <laughs> up dog. Downward facing dog. Right foot lands, back foot turns, rise, warrior one. Warrior one, come on up, hold. Drop your arms alongside your body. Okay, interlace your hands. They can be loose. Inhale, lift the eyes of the shoulders. Exhale, you'll fold, humble warrior. See how this feels. You can also just kind of come down and frame out that front foot if it's not good. Steer your right hip under, yes. Steer the left side of your body forward. And you can also just be kind of resting on the, st the stomach on the front of your right thigh as an alternative. This is perfect. The alignment is great. Yep, steer your right hip under you and take the left side of your body more forward. Get out of the arch of your back left foot. So you have to contract the muscles of that back left quadricep glute and hamstring in order to do that. And then surrender into the pose. Anchor and rise. As you come up, keep the hands bound. Yep. Straighten your right leg on track. Yeah. So we're just going to take our body right now and you're going to walk your right foot and pivot your torso with your hands clasped. The right foot's going to turn in. So you're just going to come into a wide straddle. So it's called Dande Mana Bika Tapata Pashimottanasana. You're going to lift the chest, bend your knees, and exhale, fold. Yeah. Dande Mana Bika Tapata Pashimottanasana. I think people always don't forget that I've been doing this since I was 22 years old. Yes, I'm not gonna reveal my age. It's a very long time. Five years, five years. Good, if it's too much with the bound hands, you just dump it and just rest the hands on the ground, okay? You know what, what's best in your body. Anytime you drop your head like this below your heart, it's an inversion, even though our feet are still on the ground. Use the strength of your body right now. Pull yourself up. So as you come up nice and slow, you're going to come up with straight legs. The torso is going to lift. You're going to unclasp the hands. Open the arms out. And from your right hip, you're going to turn your right toes out. Okay? We're going to pick our triangle distance. Some of us like it a little tighter and shorter. Some of us like it a little longer and wider. Right hand to right shin. I always soften the right knee. I don't have a choice these days, but you have to soften the right knee a little bit. So it's just a slight bend triangle pose. You can always use a block to the outside of the right calf if you feel like that's helpful. Perfect. Drag the block back an inch and see if that makes it a little more comfortable for you. Yep. Take your bottom right ribs and turn them and then look sideways, look up. Stay with it, guys. Let's step up into Arda while we're here. We're set up so beautifully, it would be a shame. So let's step right up into Arda while you're here and kind of test that balance on that one leg. Yeah. Yeah. So steer your left hip over your right hip. So Nikki, think moving it towards Jody. There you go. Add in whatever it is that feels appropriate for this pose. And if you fall out of the posture, you just try it again. 
Nice, Linda. Right foot forward, right hip grips in. Yes. If you're kicking, the kick goes behind you. That's it. Two more breaths. You got this. Really nice job. Release any binds. Left hand to the floor. Square your hips. Step your feet to the top of the mat. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold. Heavy in your heels for the infamous chair. Yeah, chair pose. Your feet can be together or a little separated. You pick. Drag your hands to prayer. Inhale the breath. Hook the elbow and twist, twist to the right or air twist. So your spine doesn't move. Your spine is straight. What's twisting is the little ribs. That's why we suggest air twisting. If you feel like when you take your elbow to the outside, your whole body kind of turns with you. That's what we're avoiding. We're trying to really keep some symmetry in the body. Neck is neutral. So if you're looking back, you're going to feel a little funny. So look sideways, look up. Open up your arms if you want more or just stay. Yes. Chair pose, pull it around. Yeah, I know, it never gets old. <laughs> Sit really low, you're gonna hit the floor guys, you're gonna claw the mat with your hands and it's gonna look like this. Mm -hmm. You can use blocks too, yes. Yeah, so your chest is very lifted and elevated. Your knees have a bend and you're working your core. You're gonna do little baby kind of rows, okay? And it's gonna be different for everybody. So you're gonna lower this block in the way. You'll lower and you'll pull it back up. It may be a very small movement. It may be a bigger movement. Yeah, you're gonna row and pull it back up. Yeah, you got it. Straighten and bend, row and bring it back up. You got it, perfect, good for 10. Nine, good job. Oh boy, eight. You're not gonna talk to me later. Keep going, five. Yeah, you can curse, I don't care. Yeah, you can just say, you know, oh my God, three, two, one. You're gonna hold on the end, bring your arms forward, cross the ankle, step or float, and maybe more of a crawl. Chaturanga push up. The up dog and the back bend should feel pretty solid to get your chest, everything nice and open. Downward facing dog, hips go, go back. Let's step the left foot forward and arrive in warrior one on the left side. Remember, we did that whole thing. Yes. Drop your arms alongside your body. If you can remember your grip, you're just gonna take what feels less familiar. Drop your arms, interlace them. Inhale, lift the heart and the chest. Exhale, fold. Your fold could be subtle. Uh-huh, it doesn't have to be intense. Yep. You got it. Andy, take your right side of your body and pivot a little bit more forward, the right side your left hip grips in. So there's your, everything's facing the front edge of the mat. Yes, perfect. That's excellent. And then you grip your left hip in and you really focus on that back leg. That, that back leg is like solid and strong. You know that expression when they say you really got to sit in your own shit? This is like it. This is the pose. This is the pose they're talking about. Anchor, keep the bind if you can. Rise, just bring your torso up. Keep the bind if you can. Straighten your left leg. Pivot the left toes in. You're now facing out the windows. You could pretend like you're going in a jungle somewhere. Your toes are a little forward or slightly in. Keep the bind if possible. Inhale the breath, lift the chest. Exhale, fold down the center. And if you come down and you're like, okay, the side doesn't feel as good. It doesn't feel like my body is opening. Just drop your hands down on the mat and take the bind out. This pose itself changes your mood, your energy. It helps with reducing anxiety. We should basically just stay in this posture. 
all day. Unleash the hands to the floor. Yep, come to the fingertips, long spine. We're gonna do it this way. Hands to your hips, halfway up, and then the rest of the way up. Now the legs will stay straight as you come up. The arms will open wide, spread them open. Turn your left toes forward from your left hip, your back right toes a little on an angle, and pick your distance for triangle. And just remind yourself, the little bend behind that front left knee is definitely solid and helpful. A block to the outside of that left calf is a good spot. Yeah, and then looking sideways, looking up, and turning those left ribs. There's a little lean back, but it's more through your core, right? So you don't feel like you're going into your lower back at all. That's good. Step up into Arda because it's basically the same pose. You're just shifting your weight, moving the block and the energy forward. Yeah. Perfect. The hardest part of this pose, honestly, aside from the balance, is keeping your left foot forward. Because we have weakness in our outer hips. So we have to really focus on that left leg being like Siddhasana, straight and forward. And then once you find that pose, then you add in whatever it is that you feel you need. So maybe it's just working on balanced breath. Maybe it's floating the left hand up off the ground. Maybe it's adding a little bind. Maybe none of these things are in the cards today. If you fall, you just try it again. Not a problem at all. You got this. Release any binds or embellishments. Right hand to the floor, square your hips. Step your feet to the top. Long spine on the inhale, fold in half. Chair pose, let's bang this out. Chair pose. Yeah, drag your hands to prayer. Inhale the breath. Hook the elbow and twist or air twist, depending on what's happening. So it's less where you're going, it's how you're getting there, right? Because it's a makeup of poses that we never, never were, go we're going to get to the end because there is no end. You just keep going. Stay with it. Weight in your heels is totally fine. Yep. You're just breathing, you're holding, you're maintaining. Chair pose. Dive over bent knees, forward fold. That was fabulous. That was the best forward fold. Long spine to prepare, step or float, vinyasa of choice. Keep it moving. Move through your back bend. Hips go up and back, down dog. The right foot lands smack in between your hands. Stay low to the floor. You're gonna grab that block, place it to the instep of your right foot. Place it flat at any level that works, low, medium, or high. So the right hand's gonna come down on the instep of the foot, the right hand. There you go. Yep. So the back left toes are gonna turn on an angle and you're gonna peel your left arm open. It's B variation from the ground up. That's it. So now what you're looking for is the outside of your right arm and the inside of your right leg are matching up. So you wanna really get in there. Perfect. If it's too much, your arm can rest on your thigh. Yep, that's it. The left arm, if you have a bind, is welcome to go behind your back. If you don't, it just stays close to your body. The bottom arm, if you're ready to go for the full bind, it's a lift and turn. That's it, it's a lift and a turn. Lift and turn. Take the upper torso and lean back. You don't have to go. That's it. And it may not happen. Some of us have short arms. Then that, then it's not, you're not ready. So then that's just why we stay in the half bind. The half bind's just as good. No bind is even better. Unravel the left arm. Pull up warrior two. Warrior two. Now you really sit in your shit. So you gotta sit deep. Sit deep in warrior two. 
Spread your collarbone and your chest out really wide. Make sure you're not leaning all your weight right. It's even. And then close your eyes and just be here. Wrap that inner right thigh open. And let yourself feel. Looks good, Jody. Go inward. Flip the palm, reverse the warrior, let the side body open. Circle it to the floor through a vinyasa of choice. Make it feel good. Up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back downward facing. Step the left foot smack in between your hands. Before you go anywhere, just slide the block to the instep of that left foot. Turn your back foot on a strong angle so it's set for warrior two positioning. The left palm goes flat on the block, the right arm peels open. From the ground up, you're working. That's exactly it. Lean back a little bit. Grip your left hip in. You could be on your fingertips of that bottom hand. You could knuckle the hand into the ground. Sometimes that gets you out of your shoulder. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. The right arm straight up, or you can wrap it behind your back. Any version of a binding. Yeah. Grip your left hip in. Keep turning your ribs. You just rest when you need to rest. That's it. See, this side's a little better. Yeah. Could be the hip. It could be the torso. One shoulder could be tighter. You could try it for a breath and decide it's not for you. Lean back a little bit more. Unravel the right arm and let your right arm pull you up warrior two. Sit deep in warrior two, spread open wide here. Soften the shoulders down the back, get heavy in that front thigh. Lengthen your tailbone like you're sitting in a strong squat pose. Close your eyes and breathe. Wrap that inner thigh open and find symmetry the best that your body's gonna offer today. Lift the palm, reverse your warrior. Side body gets a nice expression of openness. And then you circle it to the floor and you clear it out through a vinyasa. The up dog should feel good if you're taking it or the cobra. Hips go up and back, downward facing dog. Good, look to the top of the mat. You're gonna walk, step, flow, get there light. Long spine on the inhale. Exhale, fold, root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Yeah, standing on your right leg, you're gonna bend your left leg up like you're kicking your leg towards your butt. Yeah, drop your arms alongside your body. We're gonna bind here. Now, this is what's happening. If the shoulders are an issue, you're just gonna create the shape, okay? So if you can't get hold of your foot, Tracy, just switch legs so we're on the same side and we'll be good. Yeah, that's fine. I think you can get hold. And it's like a golf grip. So the two hands have to like slide on top of that foot. Good. So the eyes of the shoulders start to lift, soften the right leg, and then you'll start to tip forward. So it's a bound warrior three, and you're not going far. So it's not dancer pose. It's a bound warrior three. Perfect. The whole body is steered towards the mat. So keep the body nice and low. Just extend the leg back towards the back edge of the mat and open the arms out so you're in a regular warrior three. Regular warrior three. Yes. And then we'll take a giant step back into crescent lunge. And if it didn't land so great, you just take a second to reset. The right foot is forward. The back left heel is strong up off the mat. We'll drag the hands to a prayer at heart, inhale that breath, lean way out, and then we'll hook and twist. So it's all coming together here. If you get into the twist and you realize it's not great, you can place the hand to the instep of the foot for a modified variation or drop the back knee. Looking sideways, looking up is where it's at here to take the round out of that spine.
Yeah, you have to grip your right hip in, activate your left leg, and peel open. Two more. Release the hands to frame the front foot and pause, okay? Take the block and move it forward underneath your left hand. Yep, forward enough. Right hand's gonna come to the flat part of the back. Uh-huh. You're gonna push off that front leg and you're gonna step up into revolved Arda. So your right leg's gonna stay forward, the left leg is lifted. So it's kind of like a cross between warrior three and twisting triangle. I have you starting with your hand on the lower back. It may choose to stay there the entirety of the practice with this pose, it's fine. Everyone's alignment looks very good. There's a scissoring of the inner thighs and you have to continuously lift from that inner left thigh to get that leg up. Being on the block is helpful, take it up higher. So you'll get out of your left shoulder. For the last few breaths, if you feel like you can open the top arm, go for it. It's not mandatory. Just it's where the pose is going next, just the next steps. Look sideways, look up, try not to look back. Right hand to the floor, feet together at the top of the mat. Long spine on the inhale, exhale, fold. Root to rise, come all the way up. Drag it to prayer, drop your arms. Stand on your right leg. Kick your left heel in towards your left butt cheek. Drop your arms alongside the body. So it may or may not match up that your hands can meet your foot today. So you just kind of go with it and you create the shape. Soften the right leg. If you can get hold of your left ankle, give it a go. One or both hands. You kind of want to stack them up. Soften the right knee and start to tip forward. Oh, sorry. We're on the wrong leg. We did this leg. Switch to the left leg. I know. It was like, we did this leg. So whatever leg you didn't do, no, you did You did this leg. The right leg is in. You're standing on your left leg. That's where it's at. I, you know, I just, I wonder about myself sometimes. There we go. We're solid. We're solid. You got it. Stay on your left leg. And you're just tipping forward enough that your eyes of the shoulders stay very lifted. You release the arms and release the legs. You're in a warrior three, do it slow. The chest and the heart is a little higher than everything else. And now you take a giant step back crescent lunge. So we got confused. The left leg is forward, the right leg is back. We, we're here. Hands to prayer, lean out, hook and twist and decide, do you need to modify? Back knee can drop, you can slide your hand to the instep of the foot. You can always take this as an easy twist, okay? Which would mean that your hand would be on the instep or on a block and you peel open this way. Perfect. So as our bodies go through changes, little injuries, you know, lack of sleep, more, too much sleep, which I don't think ever exists for people like us. Um, it's like, I don't even know how people, my sister's like, I slept for 10 hours. Like, how is that possible? Like I haven't slept for 10 hours ever. Um, regardless, your body's always changing. So you learn to just kind of abbreviate the poses depending on the day. Stay for two more breaths because the end of the pose is where your body really like gets into it. Everything else gets angry, but your body go, goes where it's got to go. Hands to frame your front foot. Pause. Pause. Pause for a second. Take your block. Find the position forward, enough forward and high enough for your right hand. The left hand comes to the flat part of the back. Then you press off into this little version of like a twisty, revolved Arda. Yep, you got it, Linda. And then we step up. Perfect. Left hand may stay on the flat part of your back. The left arm may be able to peel open. Lift from your inner right thigh. Look sideways, look up and twist. Two more. Left hand to the floor, right foot steps the edge of the right foot, left foot's gonna just open up and you're gonna come down into squat at the top of the mat. 
squat pose. Use a block as you come down, squat pose. Yeah, use a block. It can go underneath. What you want in squat is your tailbone dropping straight down. Your elbows pressing the inner thighs open. Yeah, so your torso is very open. Because we've worked all this time to not be rounded. Bear squat is also good. You can just kind of be here. Hanging out. Yep, perfect. Two more. Good work, guys. Place your hands to the mat and just move the block out of the way and step to a down dog from here. Step to a down dog. Roll forward to a plank position. Yeah. Drop to your forearms for a moment. Yep. Drop to your forearms for a moment. You can have your forearms straight forward or you can clasp them. So this is a very small movement. You're gonna rock your weight all the way forward onto your tippy toes and the crown of the head is gonna move a little more forward. Engage your core. Then you're gonna rock your weight back. There you go. And you're gonna go forward. Uh-huh. And then you're gonna go back. Perfect. Slow, forward. Lengthen your tailbone more, Danielle. And bring it back. Okay, forward. Look forward. There you go. And back, two more. Move it forward and bring it back. One more, forward and then back, find neutral. Palms to the earth, one hand at a time, plank position. Ah, nice, downward facing dog. Right knee forward, half pigeon. Yeah. It's like a cookie at the end of the long run. Yeah, there's nothing like a cookie at the end of the long run. Not one of those goos, you want a cookie, yeah. The art of quieting your mind, using your breath, and letting your body become still. Good, use the strength of your body, start to come up. You'll swing your left leg forward and we're gonna come to face the front of the room and it's gonna be like a little tree. Your right leg will be bent, your left leg will be out. This is called sail pose. The right hand goes down behind you and you'll lift up. So your right knee will stay down and the left leg will stay grounded, lift up into it. So like a little cross between, a, it's a back bend, but it's a cross between a side plank and a back bend. And it's actually a really nice way to get in to the front line. Nice. And then you'll exhale the breath, come down. Good, when you hit the floor, you'll have your right leg a little more forward. So I can't make this rotation here, it's crazy. Right, so the right leg will be more forward and the left leg is gonna step around into a seated spine twist. Mm -hmm. So the right leg is just, you're just getting so the knee is forward is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Perfect, get your foot out of the way. This is called Ardhamat Sandrasana, seated spine twist. The, the, the leg that's down can also be straight. Inhale the breath, lengthen. And then exhale. Sometimes you use your elbow. Sometimes you give your leg a little squeeze with your arm, depending. And that actually gets into the piriformis. Perfect. You look over the shoulder, rinse and twist. Good. You'll come back to center, counter stretch. 
unravel the legs so they're in a little uh, a bridge pose, okay? If you have two blocks, you can place them underneath your hands. One underneath the right hand, one underneath the left hand, right by your side. Just have them by your side body. Yep. So you're going to lift up into a little bridge like this. The hands can be on blocks. The chest lifts. And then you'll exhale the breath. You're going to slide your seat back and press your hands into the block and try and lift. You got it? So you'll bend your knees. You'll lift your chest. You'll come into a little reverse tabletop. You'll exhale, slide the seat back and press. Legs straighten, open the chest. Again, legs bend, lift. Slide the seat back, lift. Lower down, cross the ankle, step or float. One last vinyasa right here. Yep, one last vinyasa. The up dog is smooth. Hips go up and back, down dog. So if you're just staying on your back, you just stay. So left knee forward, half pigeon, here we go. Like you're so happy for the half pigeon, then you dread everything else that comes after the half pigeon. Half pigeon pose. Left side. Let yourself just fold into it. Use the strength of your body, start to come up. As you come up, lean onto the left side and swing your right leg forward. So you're facing forward and making a little tree with your leg. The left hand will come behind your back. The right leg will stay straight out. Yeah, so it's the left hand and the left knee will stay down. Inhale the breath, and on the exhale breath, you try and lift. The creases of your wrist faces towards me at the back of the house here. You lift up and back, perfect. Nice, Chrissy. Exhale the breath lower. As you come out with control, you'll just swing your bent left knee more forward to face the front skinny edge of the bat, mat. And then take your right foot and step it around into seated spine twist. The left leg can always go straight out. Right hand behind you at the base of your spine. Inhale the breath, lengthen. Exhale, look over the shoulder and twist. You're welcome to use the elbow or give the leg a little squeeze. Good, come around to center. You can counter stretch if that feels good. And then this time you're gonna lay down and we'll go into more traditional back bend, which is bridge and followed by wheel. We'll do two sets. So first set, if you opt for more of a, a yummy version, block underneath your lower back, you may choose this version for both. If you're feeling empowered and wanna just go up into a full wheel, I am not here to hold you back. So two of your best back bends right now, whatever that is for you, yep. You could be high on the block. You can have your feet on block. Lift up and go for it right now. Yeah, go for it. If you're going up into a full wheel, steer your feet forward. Nice work. Exhale the breath, come down. If you're on a block, you just stay. You reset. One more. Lift the palms, chin to chest, giant breath in. Wherever you are today is where you are. Lift yourself up. Lift yourself up. Steer your feet forward. Wrap your inner thighs down and under. There's length from your tailbone to the backs and the knees. Lift a little higher. Exhale the breath, lower down. When you hit the floor, hug your knees in towards your chest. Give them a big squeeze. Reach for the outer blades of your feet for a brief happy baby.
Hug your knees in towards your chest and slide yourself into a Shavasana, complete rest. We did it. We did a really good class today. You made it out alive. Yes. So Shavasana, master pose, complete rest right now. If you have a little towel or something, go over your eyes. Complete rest, next two minutes. Start to wiggle your fingers, your toes. Do a big yawn with your body as you stretch your arms up over the top of your head. Hug your knees in towards your chest. And rock up any position, any, any way, any direction that feels good for you. You can also just stay down if that's the more restful conclusion to this ordeal. Sit up nice and tall. And just feel, feel the effects of the practice. What's so cool is that it's always changing. It's never the same. That hopefully is what keeps us coming back. Bring the hands to a prayer. Always have some gratitude. It is a fantastic attitude. Bow your head. And then together we lift our head and open our eyes and say namaste. Go out there, have an awesome afternoon. Hopefully your phone works. Drink plenty of water. Even though it's starting to get cold, you can still dehydrate. And I will see you next week.